people didn't call themselves black. You understand that, right? It's not like black people were like, we're black. No, in Africa, we have tribes, we have cultures, Zulu, Tosa, Baganda, Igbo, Wakandans. It's kind of funny because Trevor Noah's entire career as a Daily Show host, ironically, represents the very thing he's criticizing. Some executive somewhere thought, hey, we want to make the host of The Daily Show a black person. So instead of getting a black American to talk about black American issues, let's just get a black guy from South Africa. The thing that these guys seem to be ignoring is that black people didn't call themselves black. You understand that, right? It's not like black people were like, we're black. No, in Africa, we have tribes. We have cultures, Zulu, Tosa, Baganda, Igbo, Wakandans. But then white people... See, someone was like, what? Wakanda's really a place? They got the joke. Someone giggled. But when did they say... They, he's like, they, these white guys, they don't understand that we didn't call ourselves black. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. well, when did they say that you did? Yeah. That's nothing to do with the conversation. True. Great point. At all. Yeah. Got there, and they're like, wow, there's a lot of black people here. A lot of black people. Yeah, then in America, they invented a rule that if you had one drop of black blood in you, that makes you black, which defined how you were treated by the government and by society. It's almost like Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan are saying that that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. That's totally it. Yeah. It's almost like that's kind of what they were alluding to, Trevor. And if you weren't so incredibly politically biased against them, you would go, oh, OK. And then you wouldn't talk about it. And you wouldn't do a segment on it where you pillory them for fucking agreeing with you. I know. It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. They were, agree they were agreeing with him and then using the argument that, you know, skin, skin shades don't really even represent everything as an argument in favor of what Tro Trevor Noah is in favor of. Right. Yeah. Well, I think this, I think there's two things going on here, which the first and the foremost is just that since they're so politically, since they're so programmed to hate Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson, they're going to twist everything they say in their minds, maybe not even realize it to the most negative interpretation possible. Right. So they hear that statement and they think, oh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to say black people should stop complaining about race problems because racism oh, exists or yeah. something. Okay. Yeah. That's the first thing. And then, or right. I think the second thing here is that you're actually witnessing the clash between the liberal and the leftist. Mm -hmm. Because the liberal contention is, hey, we should make these race categories not matter. We shouldn't think or care about race categories anymore. Mm -hmm. But the leftist conceptualization is, no, 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 no. We need to polarize around our race. We need to all group together around our race so that we can use it to gain political power. So mm -hmm. don't you dare try to say that race isn't important or should be forgotten. Yeah. It's bizarre because that conflict is taking place in one person, Trevor yeah. Noah. <laughs> like I know. One person is having I that know. exact conflict at this moment. I know. Yeah. Oh, God. Trevor Noah is the hugest race grifter. Can yep. you imagine if, if the network came out and said, listen, Noah, we have to stop talking about this race narrative, okay? This race narrative is really creating a lot of conflict in America that's not good for us. I want you, I want you to write jokes that have nothing to do with race. <laughs> he, like Trevor Noah would be, God, he would like, he'd be in panic mode. Well, it's kind of funny because Trevor Noah's entire career as a Daily Show host, ironically represents the very thing he's criticizing. Oh, it's true. And the because, numbers lay it out. I'm so glad we looked up the numbers ahead of time. Well, not just that, but like Trevor Noah, like nobody thinks, nobody does not think that Trevor Noah was not a diversity hire. Right. Because it made no sense. They had all these people on The Daily Show who they could have very easily 
like there was like five or six different comedians on the daily show who were all correspondents, including mm-hmm. John Oliver at the time. Stephen Colbert had his own show at the time, but John Oliver was there and he seemed like the most likely um, pick, but there were all these other comedians that they right. could have said, okay, you're going to host the show. Now you're on the show. People like you on the show. Mm-hmm. We're going to pass the torch to you. But for some reason, which no one could possibly conceive of, they're like, Hey, mm-hmm. let's pick a black South African comedian that no one in fucking America's ever heard of mm-hmm. to host yeah. this show. Let's elevate black voices. <laughs> that's what they right. were thinking. But then the thing that's the reason I say that that him being in the host of the show is ironically the very thing he's talking about is because how insane is it? Or and you could say how racist is it that some executive somewhere thought, hey, we want to make the host of the Daily Show a black person. So instead of getting a black American to talk about black American issues, let's just get a black guy from South Africa. <laughs> Yeah. who grew up in South Africa <laughs> under apartheid has a completely different conceptualization of race because of that experience and then say, well, he can talk about black issues in America because he's black and yeah. all black people are the same. Oh God, that's so racist. Like how crazy is that? That's giantly racist. The thing, this is... He only he only came to America in 2011. This, well, I don't know if you've thought much about tokenism. I've looked into tokenism just because it... it it reflects on a lot of pushing woke stuff into media to basically, you know, balance out representation is what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But tokenism is tokenism used to be really reviled on the left because if you're going to elevate, you know, black voices, as they say, to, to places of power. You want to make sure that those people are competent because they're literally going to be representing the the race, the the culture, whatever it you know, whatever it is. If it's a woman or or a black man or a black woman mm-hmm. or whatever it is, if you ele- if you put someone into that position that is incompetent, what do you think that does for perceptions of blacks or women or whatever it is? You think that's helpful? Or you think that no. actually hurts the cause? It hurts the cause, of right? Of course it hurts that's the cause. That's what token is. That's exactly what tokenism is. And it just it's 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 so sad because it appears that that's exactly what's going on here. Because I, I don't man, I mean the numbers don't lie. Trevor Noah is not funny. Trevor Noah is no. like has destroyed the daily show. Well, I mean, to be fair, I don't know how much of it's him and how much is of it's just the direction that the writing has gone to be super woke. Yeah. And it's so it's well, so that could weird be part of it, yeah. Because the the Daily Show was the Daily Show was unfair under John Stewart. Mm-hmm. They would interview people and they would you know, dishonestly edit it to make the people look ridiculous. So there's there's criticism there. But mm-hmm. they the feeling was that the Daily Show would make fun of would have made fun of woke stuff if John Stewart was still in charge. Yes. Maybe Instead not. Of becoming, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. But it seems like seems like John Stewart pushes back on woke stuff even now. And but now it's but now it's just like Oh, we're gone. We've gone full woke. Everything's woke. Oh, you know, white people bad. Ha ha ha. That's the joke. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's where the flagging numbers are coming from. Yeah, and people, yeah, people don't care. People don't care. And on top yeah. of that, it's not funny. So then they doubly don't care. There are so many f- fucking hilarious black comedians. I mean, Chappelle's fucking hilarious. Of course, well, Chappelle's I'm just thinking, not woke. If I was, um, what was the guy's name? Uh, Larry Wilmore. That's right. Mm-hmm. Larry Wilmore mm-hmm. was one of the correspondents on The Daily Show, who I thought was pretty funny. Yeah, and I'd be pissed funny. if they're like, "Oh, we want a black oh host for The Daily Show, <laughs> and we're going to skip over the guy who's been a, a black course, a black American correspondent for years, and we're going to just give it to this guy who who moved to America four years ago <laughs> to be the host of our black American." <laughs> to be the black voice for why our American didn't they news give show. Like, what Larry the Wilmore a try? Yeah, he was oh funny. my god, I would be so mad if I was him. I'd be like, what the fuck? What yeah. happened? Even vampire bite you. Like I thirst for that blood, but I'm applying for a mortgage. I can't risk it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
that was great. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.